now it's time for the last syllabus video and this one's very important so pay close attention it's about exams now there are three proctored exams for our course there's a midterm number one which will be over chapters one through four a midterm number two midterm exam number two now the chapters for this one might waver from semester to semester depending on when spring break falls and thanksgiving falls etc cetera, etc cetera. but i'm thinking it'll be chapters five to seven it will definitely be chapters five to seven for spring summer 2017 when i'm making this video but pay attention to your syllabus in your semester if you're taking this in a later semester because that might alter a little bit from semester to semester it might be five to eight it might be five to six and include one section of seven you know something along those lines and then you'll also have a final exam and that's all the chapters in the course now first thing we need to talk about is notes you're allowed note sheets on these exams so this is not like an algebra class where you just have a formula sheet and that's it so you're actually allowed to write handwritten notes and you can write whatever you want to on there so for each midterm exam you're going to be allowed a single sheet of notes that's one sheet of eight and a half by eleven paper size you can fill out both sides that's great you write it or type it yourself and then for the final exam you're allowed four sheets of note that's four sheets of paper um, eight and a half by eleven paper size front and back four sheets of paper all of your own creation you can type calculator entries you can type definitions you can um, put in uh, pictures from the from the notes or graphs or whatever you want can be on there um, the only with with uh, one exception which we'll talk about a little bit later the note sheets should be collections of those important ideas things you're gonna forget that are organized by you I highly recommend that you do this when you are working through your paper pencil packets and when you're working through your projects when or and your exam reviews there are exam reviews in the back of the course pack hundreds of pages of them in fact so you when you're working through those reviews whatever you don't understand or you have to go look up from the notes to figure out that's what should go on these note sheets um, a single box here or there is fine but they're not to be scans of entire pages of the course pack that is completely unacceptable and might mean you get a zero for the exam I'm that serious about it so it is not your job to shrink down my course pack and make that into your note sheet that is unacceptable now scanning you know a, a box here a definition box here or one little you know graph there that's fine but wholesale scanning the sheets of paper of your course pack is completely unacceptable and will result in you having a zero for the exam which quite frankly means you will fail the course now if you want your notes back so um to use on the final so usually students take the first couple sheets of notes from the first exams and then use those on the final along with a couple more sheets that they create so you want to place your name clearly somewhere in the notes so i can find it because i grade lots of exams um, now keep in mind that if you're not at the jc jackson college testing lab this might not be an option for you so if you're um, taking it at a proctoring center somewhere or some other college you might want to make your um, originals keep those at home and just make some copies and take those into the testing lab with you that way when they're destroyed you don't care you still have the originals on you that's what I highly recommend for students at the proctoring centers and honestly if you like the originals then do that if you're on JC's campus as well if you want to keep the originals then do so and bring copies in and then uh, they can be destroyed and you don't care if you write any information from the exam on those note sheets they will not be given back to you so do not use them as scrap paper during an exam you can be asked you can ask for scrap paper and they will give it to you so if you want scrap paper just ask for it but the note sheets cannot be that because if they are you will not get them back and you'll have to recreate them and you will be very unhappy um, in general i don't mail final exam notes back so if you want them be sure to make a note of that and email me that because Otherwise, I will just keep them in my office for a semester and then they were, are destroyed along with those final exams. I just changed what this said a little bit to make this a little bit more clear. So if you want the original versions of your notes, original notes, 
then and this is especially true for students not taking it at jc tennis center because i never get your original notes then you should make copies of your notes and take those copies into the exam center those copies into the exam testing center um, so that the originals are left at home for later use all right now on midterm exam number two and the final in addition to the notes packets you bring I will actually give you the exam notes packet. It's a 10 to 14 page document in the back of your course pack that has all sorts of information. So let me bring it up for you to see. There, the front page of it looks like this. So it has exam notes packet. I have the cards there, the dice, roulette wheels, etc. Um, so it might change from semester to semester, but it's a packet of notes and in an appendix that has all sorts of information that you can use you don't really need it well you definitely don't need it for exam one so i don't bother giving it to you on exam one because there's nothing in that packet from exam one but i will give it to you on the midterm and the final midterm is generally prob over probability midterm exam number two is over probability and the finals over the entire course so you'll be at the final exam you'll have four sheets of paper of your own plus that entire packet given to you by the testing lab. So you don't have to bring your own copy. They will give it to you. That said, I highly recommend you use that co your own copy when you're studying and working. All right, you should also have a calculator for testing. They won't let you use your phone as your calculator, so you're going to need to have an actual TI-84 calculator. Now, speaking of testing centers, let's discuss that. So the Exams are the one time where you have to physically come in, prove who you are in order to earn points in the course. And therefore, they're worth a lot of points in the course. So the exams in this particular semester are worth around 42% um, of the course grade. That'll fluctuate you know, from semester to semester, but it'll be around that much. So that means that it's very important to me and to the college that these are proctored that somebody is watching and making sure that you are who you say you are and that um, you did not cheat on the exam all right so where do you take these exams well that's a good question <laughs> so you're going to take the exams in one of two locations you can either take your exams in the JC Testing Center. That is on Jackson College's central campus in room 121 Walker Hall. It's the testing lab. Um, unless a different lo proctor location has been requested and instructor approved, see below. So if you're taking it at the JC Testing Lab on central campus, um, there's a link here for their hours and info. You can also find that on Jackson College's website. The tests will be placed in the center one week before the due date, and you may take them whenever the lab is open over the course of that week. So you have about a week to take them. Whenever they're open, you just show up. You have a valid federal or state ID, i.e. a driver's license or a passport. Your Jackson College student ID does not count. So you go in there, you show them your identification, and you have your calculator and your note sheets and your pencils and your erasers, and they will give you the exam. Now, if you want three hours to take a test, you need to show up before three hours before they close, right? So if they close at four, you cannot show up at three and say, hey, I'm going to take this test for three hours because that will not work. So let me click over here so you can see the hours. So in spring, the hours are a little bit different than they are in, in regular semesters. But on Mondays and Tuesdays, for example, they're open from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. So if you want three hours to take a test, don't show up at 7 p.m. That would be bad. On the other hand, if you want four hours, then don't show up any later than 4 p.m. All right. So, and the midterm exams are about three hours for a time limit, and quite frankly, so is the final. They're all about three hours time limit. Now, that said, some students don't take, you know, many, most students don't take three hours. Most students are done, you know, hour and a half, two hours, you know, but some students will take longer. So, um, there's about a three, probably four hours for the final, three hours for the midterm exam time limits. Um, you'll be asked to show your ID. I think I explained all that. Um, so if you want a different proctor location, then you must submit a request, a formal request for that different proctor location to me. So you download and fill out and email me the testing, sent testing center selection form. So you download this, you fill it out, 
um, you write out your information and such, and then you and I might talk about it and figure out whether or not you really need accommodation at a different center or not. Um, I actually have listed here a whole bunch of different centers. Um, there are, if there's a college near you, anywhere near you, there's probably a testing lab near you. So, um, and I actually at the bottom have a link to a website that has other testing centers linked to, so you can find them at local colleges near you. So there are about three pages of them for this particular website in Michigan. So you can go there and look for, um, let me figure out where it is. Oh, find a CCTC participant. I think that's where it is. Yes, there. And you click on, now if you're in the state of Virginia, you could click on Virginia and, and look for a site there. Um, Michigan, I'll click on Michigan because that's where most students are at, where the college is. And you can find, see there's 26 different colleges that are listed in this. So you would find a testing office near you and then get a hold of them. I'll change that link so it's better for you. So there we have it. So you fill out that form. Um, you find a lab near you. You fill out that form and you get it done by the time requested in the schedule. So in every schedule, there's a link for when the testing center selection form is due. So you want to look for that somewhere and find it because when it's due, you want to make sure that you, if you want a different testing lab, that you have it done because I will send the tests out to the Jackson College Central Campus testing location otherwise. All right, so we're all done there. One other quick note, um, just for the spring of 2017 and later semesters, this might not be the applicable, but in the summer, there were not any Saturdays or Sundays available for testing. So it is very possible that I might be able to proctor a test for you on a Saturday or Sunday on central campus because normally it is open on Saturdays during the regular semesters, but in spring, summer of 2017, it will not be, the testing lab will not be. So um, I might be able to try to find accommodations on central campus for you for proctoring. So um, keep tuned for emails about that as we get closer to exam time. In later semesters, this will not necessarily be a problem. All right, we're all done with the syllabus. Remember to post your questions on the discussion boards. That's what they're there for. And hopefully I will be able to clarify any questions you have.